Hello, I'm Don Martin here at Anderton's, which is a bit of a dream come true for me. I'll be playing a new song that is uh, unreleased so far, so hopefully if we get a good recording of this, we'll be able to release it to you and you'll be able to buy it and listen to it and give it to your kids and your uncles and your aunties and your grannies and your, your grandas and all that, you know. Um, I'll be on tour in April this year with Demi Mariner. If you haven't heard of her, please check her out. She is absolutely amazing. And uh, we're really looking forward to getting back to the UK and, uh, and playing some music for you all. So this is a new song called Haunted. Bravado. 
It's not some egotistical fantasy Do you know that bullet? You know that bullet with your name on it? Well, I would have swallowed it whole was unbelievable thank you very much dom for uh, that amazing performance and thank you guys for tuning in again hey i'm in um, my element here look, <laughs> look at this place well this this is great we love having artists on um at the uh, sort of at this um earlier stages of their career dom martin here has been on the scene i think we first started hearing of you maybe three or four years ago um you got some amazing uh, accolades from, you know, awards from the British blues scene. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, or as you've heard so far, and you'll hear a bit later on in this video as well, very talented uh, singer and oh, uh, guitar thanks, player. So, Dom, welcome to, welcome to Guildford. I am over the moon that you invited me here. It is lovely, absolutely lovely to be here. So thank you. Well, it's all good. So look, we're going to talk about... I think we'll, we'll get to know you a bit better first, and okay. then we'll do a dive into gear and, and stuff like that. You're seemingly pretty comfortable whether you've got an acoustic or an electric in your hands. It, so. wasn't, it wasn't always like that. I mean, I was a, primarily a, an acoustic player since I was a very, very young age, and I never really um, gravitated towards the electric guitar, although I always listened to Rory Gallagher and mm -hmm. Jimi Hendrix and players like that. But I... I guess I always just loved the, the simplicity of an acoustic guitar. You don't need any equipment. Yeah. You just need the, the guitar, the strings, and that's you. You can feel the vibration of that. And the power of that was always, like as a, as a really young kid, the power of that was always overwhelming for me. I loved it. And I, I just became addicted to it, you know. But for me, the guitar was a way to bond with my dad. Right. You know, because he was a, a really, I mean, the only way I can describe his playing is if Tommy Emmanuel and Ralph McTell had a baby. <laughs> That's, wow. That would have been my dad, you know, he was that good, but he was so troubled, like he came up, he was dragged up through the troubles in Belfast, and we'll not get into all that, but the guy never had a chance, do you know what I mean? And he had five kids, I was the middle child, and he always drank, and, and there was always stuff going on in the house, like parties and music all night, and it was a, it was a pretty crazy upbringing. I thought that every household was like that. I thought that was normal. And listen, I've nothing to compare it to, so I, it, but for me it was great fun, you know, it was, it was, it was all normal and grand. But the only way I could really bond with him, and I found this out later in my life, the only way I could really get get through to him was to take an interest in what he was interested in. The only thing that really excited him was guitar, you know. And so that's that, that's how I bonded with him. That's and he great. taught me so much. I mean, everything I do on guitar was directly from him, really, you know. And that led me on to the the way I live my life today, you know. That's so I owe him an awful lot. That's a great little intro to the to the story oh, thanks, there. Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, was your dad pro? No, for, he, 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 um, for him, I think it was just therapy. I think it was just a way to make sense of what was happening around him when he was growing up. And uh, he just loved it. He just loved to play. And, and he had such charisma. And, and he just had such a great attitude towards music. He was a really good songwriter. His songs are beautiful. He was a real tortured soul, I think. You know, He should never have had kids. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I swear by this. I said, oh, he should definitely never have had kids. I don't know why he did. I think we were all just happy accidents. Wow, um, I'm sure he's proud of what you're. Yeah, he would have loved now. all this stuff. He would yeah. have really loved. He would have. He would have been really proud. I think. And um, he, uh, I owe him. I owe him a lot for that. You know, for for putting me onto things. When I was like five years old, he gave me a tape of Rory Gallagher, and it was Blueprint on one side, 
live in Europe on the other. Right. I listened to that tape every day when I was a kid. I wore I wore it out. I had to sell the tape it back together so many times. <laughs> I still have it, but it doesn't work. You know, and, and my whole childhood was on that tape. Like him giving me that tape, like Rory Gallagher was my only constant growing up. You is, know what I mean? Is that an obligatory Irish thing oh, just to probably. be brought up on? Rory I don't know. Gallagher. I have no idea. <laughs> For a long time, it just felt like I was the only person that knew about him. And then when as I got older yeah. and I started touring and, and I realized that everybody knew him, I was like, oh, I don't have to carry this flame for Rory anymore. <laughs> you know, I can move on to the other things and do my own thing. Whereas for a long time, I just played Rory stuff and I was just only interested in that one thing, you know. I've broadened my horizons so much over the past five, six years. It's, uh, I don't even know myself anymore, do you know what I mean? But it's a, in a good way, in a really good way, you know. How much of your childhood and, and you know, early guitar experiences was playing in some of those traditional kind of, you, I always have this sort of really romantic scene of, you know, across Ireland going to a pub and there being, you know, four or five guys Aye, playing, yeah. you know, a couple of acoustics, fiddle, that sort of thing. Or was it more of a, you know, a rock and roll kind of? No, upbringing? there was elements of that. There was always elements of that. Um, my dad used to do, I mean, it was more of a drinking session, like more than anything else, you know what I mean? <laughs> But my dad used to follow up out a group of uh, traditional Irish guys, you know, like banjo players, yeah. fiddle players, and all, just playing spoons, all sorts of stuff. Like, and uh, okay, I, I was his shadow for a long time, you know. I just kind of mm. followed him about, and he was my dad, you know. So he was, it was all I knew, really. He was a really bad influence on me <laughs> from a very young age, you know, like a really bad. Like I can know that. Now. He wasn't a bad person. It's yeah. just the way he was, you know, the way he lived his life, and because I wanted to bond with him through this, I just. I ended up doing all the stuff that he did, you know, like the, dra the drink and the drugs and, and the, the craziness, you know. But he was such a gentle soul. There was no hurt in his heart mm. or in his soul. You know, he was just such a lovely guy. But yeah, he loved the, the traditional stuff and it taught him all these, like he had all these different chords. Like the, you, know, you could play a G chord, but he would have like 10 different variations of that G chord. But like Eric Johnson in that way, you know, right. where he was just able to fluently play the same chord in a different way that sounded lovelier yeah. than yeah. the last time he played it. It was, uh, it was something to, to witness. And he was just such, he was like an unassuming character. He would not have known that he played guitar so well and had a, such a deep personal connection with the instrument um, if you just looked at him, you know. And so when, when did you first, you know, how old were you when you first started thinking, maybe I can make a living out of this? Oh, I never really thought about it like that at all. Um, it wasn't until I met my uh, my friends and my managers now, Fenton and Audrey. I did, it was the weirdest thing. I did a, uh, it was a community radio show in Belfast called The Beat 106, I think, with Big Chris. And it was like a rave show. It was like, right. shh, 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 and all this stuff, you know what I mean? I said, if you're in that, that's okay. I, I listened to it, it's fine. Music's music, it's a form of expression, and I'm, I'm all for that. But um, it must have been the weirdest thing for anybody listening to that show that day because you have all this rave music on and all this house party music going on. And then all of a sudden, oh, here's Don Martin, local kid playing, you know. And I played a song I wrote called The Rain Came. And all of a sudden there's this folk type music coming on. So whoever's listening to this must have went, what's this on this channel? <laughs> you know, it was just so, so out of place. Um, and Fenton had heard this and Fenton was doing like some pub gigs and getting, you know, promoting local bands to do just get their foot in the door really and get them some money and stuff and get their, their names out there. And he heard this uh, this radio show that we did and, and he, 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 mo he just heard something in it that he liked and he, he recognised in it that, uh, that he, he could work with it. And so he got in touch with me and, and since then we've built a friendship that's just completely unbreakable. You know, him and his wife, Audrey, if, uh, they, they've showed me things that I didn't know existed, like human compassion and and empathy and love and stuff like that, that um, I'll carry that with me for the rest of my life, you know what I mean? My, my whole life changed for the better when I met them, you know, it's it really powerful. did. I owe them an awful lot and uh, I'll never forget that, you know, they've, they've saved me for myself in, in a lot of ways, you know. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you must have, just to have been on the radio though, you must have, what, were, you, were you just like a sort of a up and coming kid or do you, I, I don't was, know how old were you when, when you've got that sort of break? That, that would have been 2017, so like around 27. But like before that, I was, um, like I have a bit of a checkered past with drugs and alcohol, you know, for a long time. I just, uh, I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, you know, I was a crazy person. So you were Absolutely. relatively late then to- I was very late, uh, very, to the very sort late, of, you know, yeah. feeling like this could be a, oh, a yeah. career choice. Yeah. I, uh, 
I wanted to die, to be honest with you. Like, I was screaming out for people to kill me all the time. I got kidnapped in, in, in Antrim one time, and they actually thought, you know, we're going to kill you now. And I was like, let's go. You know, I'm, I'm ready. But there was a guitar in the corner. They kept me there for about four days. Um, but there was a guitar in the corner, and I played Too Much Alcohol by Rory Gallagher. It's like an old, it's an old blues song. And I played it with like a, a clipper lighter or something, or a glass, you know, mm -hmm. to do the slide parts. And they loved it. They just went crazy over this. They were like, play it again. Play it again. And they ended up being like, we ended up being best friends for the next couple of days. And they just supplied me with drugs and alcohol. And then I finally, you know, seen my exit. <laughs> Never looked back. That was one of the last times I took drugs. You know, at the beginning, it's fun and it's exciting. And you're with these people and it's all good. But then at the end of the day, it, uh, it becomes very, very dangerous. You know, it is a very, very dangerous line to be on. And I was so young and stupid and naive and dumb and, you know, and everybody knew that I played guitar and I, there was parties on all the time, you know, and I just couldn't turn it off. For a long time, I just could not turn it off, man. And I would go from this party to that party and this party, but then I'd still be going and then I'd go to that party and there would always be guitars and stuff and everybody would be up for that, you know, and it was, uh, it was a crazy self-destructive trait that I got from my mm. father, you know, God bless him. Like, but um, I was so lucky to turn my life around. I've been clean for over 10 years. I haven't had a drop of alcohol and coming up to five years now, you know, and like I was saying about these, you know, turning your life around and stuff like that. I, I realize that a lot of people don't get out and there's so many casualties in music. Like, you know, I didn't want to be another casualty found in a, in a hotel room or a jail cell dead, you know, in 33, you know what I mean? Um, meeting Fenton and Audrey, is, they, they give me the, the opportunity to see an actual future for myself for the first time in my life, you know, and I, that's, that's a massive, a massive evolution, you know, where I come from. I got very, I, I, I got very, say, very lucky. Yeah, that, most interviews I do don't start <laughs> quite like that. I was thinking about what to but, say on the way over here. No, I was like, know, don't go into the drug story, Dom. Don't go into the alcohol well, story. Try and keep it lighthearted. But you know, if, if I think you, I you think might as well it's just, good because yeah. the you know I, I I think sometimes it's people can take musical instruments and music superficially, oh, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. just, they're fun to play and yeah. fun to listen to music in the background. This saved my life. But yeah, there's yeah. A, there is a power uh, to music that, um, you know, I think anybody who's going through difficult times yeah. can draw on. I, I say um, this at most of my gigs as well, you know, if the crowd's right and they want, they want to hear mm. a bit of talking in between in the songs and I always say, listen, you have to come at this it's not a competition. Mm. You don't have to be good at it. You don't even have to be any, you don't even have to know any chords. Mm. You just pick up the instrument or any instrument that, it, that you're interested in and try and see what you can do with it and come at it without that competition feel like you have to, like there's pressure, like you're playing mm. for people. You play for yourself. You play from the heart. Mm. That's the only thing that matters. And if you can get that, then the, there's so much, the pressure's just gone. You know, and, and it is a tool and it should be explored more. Like I used to work in, uh, in the nursing homes in, in Antrim town. I used to cycle my bike to each one and I would just work in the kitchens, you know, like cleaning mm -hmm. dishes and stuff when I was a kid. And uh, there was one, one old woman that, that was in this dementia place and, and uh, she, did, she didn't remember anything, you know. And every time I seen her, she had no idea who I was, like, but I seen her every couple of days a week. And whenever they would come into the, the mess hall to have food and stuff, there was an old piano in the corner. And she was a great piano player. She just didn't remember. It was insane. Mm. So I used to get her to go over every time I was there. I used to go, Betty, go and play the piano. And she would go over and she would start remembering how to play. And she was brilliant. Like, why isn't this being explored? You know what I mean? Mm. This should be a thing that's like in the medical books or something. You know, music as a, as a way of like helping people through things and helping people cope and with dementia. And, it, I mean, it beats any tablet or any drug or any, any drink that I've ever had in my life. When I pick that instrument up and I start playing, it does something to me, you know, mm. it makes me feel better. And it, that's, that's a massive achievement, you know. When you're writing, I had, I had this interview with Carlos Santana playing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it was a... I'm gonna leave now. Yeah. It was a difficult one for me. I've always felt a sort of a bit of a moral responsibility on this to not promote drugs and drink. Yeah, no, I'm with you, yeah. Um, and, but I think there is a, the, you know, the, it's impossible to avoid just how much amazing music was written by artists yeah. going through, yeah. you know, periods of, of, of you know, Definitely. drink and drugs related uh, lifestyles. So what, 
do you how have you managed to um you know having been clean as you say for five or ten years now do you find that enables better songwriting or is it something you're able to draw on that past or was is there a creative outlet that you almost think you know you miss i don't i don't want to put you in a difficult position no, i'm not certainly all, not no, advocating no. you know going, no no it's a it good question be to, um you know. I, I think you need to experience life in order to write so i mean you don't have to like but it does help if you're sitting you know doing the same thing week in week out you know with the same people then there's no I mean, that's just your life. You go to these parties and you take loads of drugs and now you're up for four days at a time or whatever. And it just, just progressively gets worse and worse. It's hard to write a song. And then, you know, you can write one song about that. But if you're writing the same song about the same thing over and over again, you're just, it becomes stale. You become stuck in it. And uh, I think, you know, songwriting comes with going out there and getting your heart broken, and getting your, mm. your face bashed in and you know your guitar's broke and your guitar's stole. I had a guy try to steal my shoes at a gig one time, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was just mayhem. But I think all these things, you have to be open-minded and put yourself into these situations with an open mind and an open heart because that's where all these great songs come from, do you know what I mean? Mm. If I hadn't have been through all the stuff that I've been through, the songs would not sound the same, they would not be the same, you know, they'd be a bit shit. <laughs> <laughs> shall we say you know what I mean I'd just be another guitar player with nothing to say because yeah. I haven't experienced it like I've seen some horrible things like I witnessed my dad die you know he got really sick and I looked after him for four years I was 17 when I moved in with him so, lots so I put my life on hold my teenage years were, were kind of over from that I never really fully recovered from it to be honest with you but I'm able to cope with it now because mm. I know I'm aware of what it is and the feelings and I have people around me that support me in that way and they know that if I'm a bit quiet or if I'm going a bit weird, they know to just kind of make sure I'm not going to do anything crazy, you know what I mean? Which I never mm. would. But um, it's a great question. But like my dad was, it was a, it was a crazy experience because he, he was, he suffocated to death over the period of a long time, basically. And when he died, there was a sign of relief that he wasn't in that place anymore, but it was also so hard to see him go because he was like my best mate, you know what I mean? So after that, I just became a magnet for psychopaths. Everywhere <laughs> I went, I could not get away from these people. It just it, no matter where I was, they found me and they had, they always had drugs. They were so accessible to where, you know, from where I came from. Like by the time I was, but by, by the time I was 14, mm. I'd already tried acid, ecstasy, cocaine, speed, ton of weed and alcohol and cigarettes. You know, I, I'd already experienced all these drugs at a very, very young age. The psychological effects and chemical imbalances in your brain that that does to you at that age, you never really get back from that. I'm so lucky to be sitting in this chair, do you know what I mean? Mm. But all these things that have, have kind of kick-started the songwriting process and, and they've made me dive into this instrument and be completely committed to doing this for a living, you know, for, for better or for worse. Mm. It's not about the money. There is no money. Honestly, like there is zero, there is zero money. I mean, I got really lucky even just having these guitars. I mean, this is a golf caster from America, the guy called Izzy. He, uh, he built this for me like for free, you know what I mean? And then we got in touch with Loudon because Loudon's an Irish guitar maker and they live up the street from where I live in, in Ireland. And I wanted an Irish guitar and they worked with me and they were amazing. Do you know what I mean? All you have to do is ask for these things. There's no big uh, like thing, like a, like a, there's no, um, What's the word I'm looking for? There's no stigma or anything ab mm -hmm. about just asking for a bit of help. You know, can you build me a guitar? Because I really need one. And they, they'll, they'll work with you, you know? It's finding the right people, I guess. What was the question again? No, do you know what? I'm going <laughs> to... I do want to... Look, I'm no expert. I'm, you know, certainly not any kind of, you know, psychiatrist or anything like that. Oh, you are, right. You're a musical psychiatrist. I think before we move on to gear, I think it probably is important to just go... The fact that you've found people to talk to yeah yeah obviously audrey and fenton yeah the the wider guitar community oh, has yes. obviously um i don't want to overemphasize this but it's obviously it saved you oh big time uh, i would not be here today but I, I, you, know. you know if anybody's watching this and you know can relate to perhaps things that you've gone yeah. through just i suppose what do you say find people that you can talk to definitely um, be open-minded about it's okay to say that i'm not well you know mm. there's no there's nothing wrong with saying, listen, I, I'm not feeling too good, like, and I don't know why, and I'm not really sure what it is. It's not like I can actually pinpoint where the pain is. You know, mm. it's, a, it's a thing that 
it's unexplainable mm -hmm. and a lot of people try to hide that and I, I tried to hide it for a yeah. very very long time like the first time I was doing gigs over here in England and stuff I was a completely different person I became somebody else for that gig you know somebody who was mm -hmm. able to cope like yeah. even the accent and always changed like I had to soften the Belfast <laughs> which I'm doing right now so you can understand <laughs> what I'm saying do you know what I mean but it, it's the hardest accent in all of the it's crazy. You know, British Isles There's or whatever. There's so many the, different The Northern Irish stuff. accent, yeah, if it goes full on. As soon as I like, go back to Belfast, yeah. I'm like, right, get out of my way! You know, you're like, you have to be that way, otherwise you'll get uh, chewed up and spat out, you know. Amazing. Yeah. Well, look, you know what I said, I, I, I appreciate, uh, you know, that, and it's and it, 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 wonderful that you can be so open about it and Definitely. talk about it to someone yeah. that you've you know, yeah. only just met. Let's talk about, though, some of the gear. Now, I'm going to start with the guitar. I don't know if you guys agree right. with me out there, but I thought that was the best... I call it a DI'd sound. I know, strictly speaking, it's not. But the, that was the best sounding uh, piezo yeah. acoustic sound Thank I've you. ever heard. That, that means a lot coming um, from you because you've heard them all. You know, yeah, so. I mean, if I, if I was going to try and get a sound like that, I would, if I'd have just heard it, I'd assume somehow we managed to get some killer miking technique yeah. and we've added some great stuff in post to just fatten it up and warm it up. Yeah. And that's not what it is, right? So you don't want to explain what people just heard it in was, that first bit. It was a lot of years of trial and error, mm -hmm. you know, and I really do care about how the guitar sounds to the point where it's like, uh, a, you know, a real, if it's not where it needs to be, I'm freaking mm -hmm. out. I'm like, you know, this isn't giving me what I need to do this song or that song, and it's just, it doesn't sound right. So I, uh, I my first gig doing like a, a run of private house gigs in England, which is a, a lovely group of people called the Underground Music Club. Thank you very mm -hmm. much for, for everything you've done for me. Um, I, I met a guy called Gordon Maxwell, Scottish guy. Sadly, he's passed on now. He was a very dear friend, he was a lovely guy. But he, at this house gig, he, he brought this pedal, this Rory Gallagher Hawk pedal made in Scotland by Flynn Amps. Flynn Amps, if you're listening or watching, I would love a replacement on one of these because this one is completely battered and is held together with blue tacks. So if you could help me out, that'd be, yay. Um, but anyway, he brought this, uh, this pedal and I didn't have pedals at the time. I was using a Marshall AS50D, which mm -hmm. is the acoustic, yeah. uh, the acoustic amp, which is great. It's it's 100%. Um, he gave me this, and I I took it home, and that's that started my uh, my my tongue thing quest or whatever you want to call it. This is a game changer for acoustic guitar. It's not built for acoustic guitar, but you can use it for vocals or harmonica or anything. It just boosts everything. It's so good. You, you said it's before it's a, it's a clone of an old Range it's, Master. Yeah, it's which, apparently it's a, a, an old Range yeah, Master. Yeah, so clone. would it just been like a boosty, fuzzy type? Right, pretty much. Thing. I mean, you can get it the the grid up mm -hmm. if you turn the volume way up, like you know. But as you can see, the EQs are like nine o'clock, mm -hmm. and the volume's halfway up. And I just kind of keep it in that range, even for electric gigs as well. It's usually just around there, and. That was a real game changer, especially for the pub gigs where everybody's shouting and nobody's mm -hmm. listening to you. You just hit that, you can hear yourself. So you'd have your acoustic bit. plugged acoustic into that, into this, and into at the, the time still into uh, the AS50D. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it just made it a different animal altogether. It was great. Even then, because yeah, I, I think yeah. the, what's uh, fantastic about the sound that, that you had in that first bit is it doesn't have that ice picky yeah, that uh, harsh, um, harshness. That, that, yeah, you it's know, awful. Normally, um, yeah. But how, when did you start plugging your acoustic guitar into conventional electric guitar valve amps? I got a, what was it? I think it was a Blues Deluxe or a PV Classic 50 or something like that. One of my Good very amps. first yeah. valve amps. This is the same chassis of that, mm -hmm. that first Blues Deluxe. I got it for £200 from a guy because it was broke. Do you want to know what yeah. was wrong with it? He had a 4 ohm speaker in it. It takes right. an 8 ohm, so it sounded really bad. He thought it was broke. When I got it home, I changed the speaker and it just bloomed. Genius. My first, uh, my first ever experience with a yeah. Fender amp, which is not the best example, if I'm being honest. But uh, yeah, it was a real game changer. So a valve amp with an acoustic guitar and a Rory Gallagher Hawk pedal, and you'll have the sound. Now my career's over. And everybody, no, no, everybody but, will be doing it. And, then the, but, and great reverb as well. I wasn't yes, sure, was that yeah. coming from the, the Fender or from the Big Sky? The, it is coming from the Big Sky and the Marine Layer reverb. So, oh, so you're doubling up? I am doubling up. See, I got this, uh, I, over the COVID thing, I got a small grant from uh, an arts council or something. Mm -hmm. And thank you for that. 
Um, but you had to buy gear with it and you had to produce the receipts and all this stuff. So I, um, I looked up some reverb pedals and this was the cream of the crop or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And I had the money, so I bought it not really knowing what I was getting myself into because it just has so many different presets and you need a PhD and there's no manual, the manual's online, so if you've no internet, you're screwed, you know? <laughs> so I'm, I'm going through this thing going, what is that do? And I'm going, all these things are spacing out and I'm using stereo into different amps and I'm going, this is too much, or is it, yeah. you know? So I got the, uh, I got the Marine Layer Reverb. I found, I found three presets in the big sky and I saved them. I tweaked them a little bit and yeah. I've, it's been that way for years. I haven't changed them at all and I put it through the marine layer reverb. Now, the one without the other is fine. The one without the other, it sounds grand, nobody's gonna really know yeah. the difference, but see the both of them together, it does something, especially for the acoustic stuff. It just, it just gives it this nice round edge or something that's not, I don't know how to explain it, but it just sounds so beautiful. I'm, I'm a massive fan of Reverb on reverb. Oh, so yeah. leave, leave the reverb on the amp and yeah. use the reverb. Yeah, there is a little but bit of reverb I'm on just, the amp. Because that's what yeah. I was checking. Yeah, but you, bit, you've got is, reverb yeah. on reverb on reverb. Yeah, so it's, obviously it's, it's three times better. It does um, sound a bit overkill, but you can't deny the sound. You know, it just does sound I don't think so it nice. does. I think as long as you get the mix right. Yeah. Because you don't want it. You don't want it to be so washed out that you exactly. can't hear anything. Yeah. But as long as the mix is right and the reverb is genuinely in the background, I think it's honestly. I I was listening in there and I I I. Genuinely, genuinely, thought it was one of the best acoustic guitar sounds. And I th you know, you. everyone's chasing this really, really. You know, there must be a better preamp system. Yeah. You know, Tommy yeah. Emmanuel's invented this amazing preamp yeah. system. Who's what's the latest LR bags? Fishman, this, that, or the other. I've and tried go, them all, man, and none of them are good. Yeah, maybe it's just <laughs> maybe joking? that's not the problem. No, just stick with just basic piezo preamp, I, I, but, but yeah. run it through a, a yeah. traditional I, I, guitar. You're, you're exactly right. I think the the more basic mm. stuff that you have in the guitar, but the more intricate stuff you have mm. going through it is definitely a, a big game changer. Well, it was for me, anyway. Um, let's move on to, we haven't heard you play, well, obviously I've heard you play on YouTube and stuff, I but we haven't heard you play electric in here yet. Oh, yeah, but yeah. tell us about that. Um, what was your, you know, when did you realize that actually, you, you know, you stopped playing it or you were gonna start playing electric as well as acoustic? I, uh, I, I went into a, it was a Neil Young or Bob Dylan tribute night in Belfast and I met these two other musicians. I'd never played really in a band before. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden I had a drummer and a bass player out of nowhere, you know? And uh, I didn't even have an electric guitar. I've only been playing electric guitar for five, six years, maybe a bit longer. Mm -hmm. And somebody lent me a Strat or something or whatever it was. No, I got what it was. I got a bullet Strat from Indonesia. It was 120 yeah. pound, right? And I had this 1984 West Tone Thunder 1A neck. Yeah. And I had, to, I had to cut the last two frets off to get the intonation to work. So oh, it was wow. just a complete nightmare to, 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 work, to, to get it working, you know. But I finally did, and, and I had that Strat for a few years, and I put 13 gauge strings on it, and it was a nightmare. I don't know, because I was so used to playing the 13s on the acoustic, I just thought it would, I didn't, the knowledge wasn't there, you know. Um, so yeah, we started doing a couple of, couple of pub gigs and stuff like that, and I could just progress from there, really, you know. It How was, did it change your, your, your playing style? Oh, it Were changed you... everything. It was just, once you put on a set of 11s or 10s, it's just so easy to play, so you have to adapt to that, you mm -hmm. know, you can't, because if you play too hard on electric, it chokes up a bit. It's like the lighter you play, mm -hmm. the more it blooms, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, I'm still learning. I'm, I'm really, really still learning. I'm, I'm getting comfortable. A Were you playing all the slide on acoustic, or did that come? Yeah, it came, as you... came naturally later on yeah. with, the, with the electric. But I, I have a tally back home with with thirteen gauge strings on it, and the action's really high, and it's just it just kills with with the slide. But I never take it out anymore, you know. It just, there's just no there's no need for it, you know. And is was that really where? all the Rory Gallagher stuff that you were listening to as a kid kind oh, yeah. of could yeah. come through and yeah. crank distorted amplifiers. Yeah, and, it, was, uh, uh, it was a hell of a moment, man. It was a hell of a moment getting the, you know, the because the, I usually use the two amps and, and just having that, that power and, you know, mm. the, the sensitivity, which only really came when I got these pickups, to be honest with you. Um, there was a guy, there's a guy in Chester and he's, he's made this company called uh, House of Tone Pickups. Mm -hmm. And he got in touch with me and he, he sent me a set which was kind of weird timing because I had a, uh, a vintage uh, Lemon Drop from a yeah, yeah. vintage brand, yep. Lemon Drop, mm -hmm. uh, the Peter Green model, but I stripped all the yellow off it and I dyed it green. 
So it's like a green lemon drop, right? And it's, uh, I had the, I tried different pickups in it. I was never happy with any of them. And then he sent me a set of uh, his Peter Green pickups. So right. I put them in and the difference between them and everything else I tried was unbelievable. Yeah. Like you'd hear different volume levels and different pickups and stuff like that. But these had a difference in nuance, the way you play, the way your fingers touch the strings, the sensitivity and, and just the openness. And I don't know even how, you know, you say all these superlatives yeah. about how to make it yes. make sense, but <laughs> it just made such a difference. It was inspiring to play these pickups, you know. Stylistically, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just noticing you, you've got that pretty traditional, you know, short nails on your left hand, longer nails on your right hand. McClaws. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you, is, uh, are you, T typically, you know, playing a, a finger style on the electric oh, yeah. or you, yeah. Oh, yeah. So not, no, I mean, there's a combination a of the two. Or? I do use a plectrum, yeah, but there is, there is, um, there is certain songs, blues songs. I'll show you if you like, mm. where, I, where I love to to play finger style. On, but on let's let, let's let's just you yeah wanna, yeah, yeah wh whack that in. This is um, where the mistakes come in. All right, do you want to hear what I'm yeah, using I'm, first, I'm, or do you want to hear some? Um, some, no, let's just just yeah. I, I just think get just. Yeah, just do a little, you know, 30 seconds or something, typically how you sound and how you play. Because you, you got them nails, you can really dig into it. You know? I love that. That's Roy Buchanan stuff. Uh, I can't play. Honestly, I've, I've only ever learned to play with a plectrum. And more recently, it I've tried nightmare. to get these three fingers yes. to do something. It is a nightmare. It's, it's so frustrating. Useless. You need a place where nobody can hear you, <laughs> and you can just sit and do it for a couple of months, and then you'll, be, you'll get it. But you need to do it away from everybody that can hear, you know. And, uh, and you'll be okay. People so, will not hear you. So let, let, let's talk. So what, what you've essentially done, and I, I love this about your rig, is it's the same rig, same pedal board. Exactly. We haven't changed any of the settings yeah. on the amplifer. Just it's, literally plugged the guitar cable into a different guitar. Yeah. It took me years to get it to work because it was so bad. Because I, I usually open the show with uh, you know a couple of solo acoustic songs, and then yeah. we get the band on. We'll do a couple of songs. Yeah. And to have the the mucking about and trying to change. I just needed something really simple, nothing over the top, just something you can just plug in and play. And this is the best I could do with what I've had. And you know, it's just, just that kind of thing. There's no, I have loads of money to buy the best of stuff. This is just stuff that I've acquired over the years. And uh, it all, it took me a very, very long time to figure out which way it all goes to make it so sound let's the best. Because the, the tone, well, in that little clip that we just heard there, I think you've, you've, you've captured nicely that um, loud driven Fender guitar sound, but obviously it's, we're not loud yeah, or it's, not, it's the same setting we have here. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure people will be interested to know how you've done that pedal wise. So what, what, what is okay. the chain on the board? Okay, so we got the tuner, mm -hmm. which does something I don't know what it does. <laughs> it's, it's, it's supposed to be self-explanatory. I could never figure out. It just turns everything off or something, you know, it's weird. Uh, so we go from the tuner to this red box, which is kind of a clone of the Mad Professor Big Tweety Drive, I think. The big? Big Tweety Drive. Right, okay, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's a similar And what is that thing. just a, a, a little pedal company that you know or that you're friends with? No, no, I don't brand? know them at all. I think they're from, they're from Denmark or Sweden or somewhere. Uh, the Mad Professor guy. Oh, sorry, that is a Mad oh, Professor. Oh, yeah, pedal. yeah. Well, sorry, it's, it's, I thought you said it was a clone of a Mad Professor. I think it, it's either, it either is one or it's a clone <laughs> of one. I am not okay. too sure. So none of this is kind of like legally binding or anything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, from that we go. I mean, the volume is pretty high on that. If I turn this fuzz off, I mean, it does, it is, it is, high, it is really loud. So the you know? fuzz is actually backing yeah, the volume yeah. down. And that a took me a okay. very, I was, I never liked fuzzes. I mm -hmm. was never into fuzzes because it's just, you know, it's not for me, you know. Although that actually does sound pretty good <laughs> right now, but you know, before it didn't. It, I, it's interesting how it works in conjunction with it. Yeah. But okay, so the, so we got this so big we, Tweedy drive. Yeah into the fuzz face. The fuzz face is going into a Tumnus Deluxe, but I don't, I don't ever turn it on. I only use it for the buffer. Do you intentionally uh, rub all of the screen print off your pedals, or have you got some sort of Rory Gallagher acidic sweat that uh, every time you touch things, all the screen print comes off? Yeah. What, yeah, the I guess so. 
<laughs> just covered in battery acid and hope for the best, you know. Because that was always a that was always a, people. You, you know, Rory Gallagher's had that strap, which is sweat. You yeah. know, similar. Yeah. You know, apparently, that was which I'm guessing comes something from the drinking or whatever like that. More but than just like yeah, it's pure alcohol. Wasn't <laughs> yeah. it? Like, really? It's essentially like rubbing you your guitar you with alcohol like every day. Wrung out his shirt at the end of the night <laughs> and just drank that. You know, it's the, your cheapest beer you can get. See, so right, so we got a Tweedy, a big Tweedy, big which tweedy I guess drive. is vintage Fender drive sound yeah. into a fuzz into face. A fuzz face. But and back then, in the volume down, which is yeah, interesting. Yeah. Into a Tumnus Deluxe. Into a Tumnus, but the Tumnus great. doesn't ever get turned on. It's just for the buffer. So really? if, you turn, if you turn the buffer off, it doesn't sound as good. If you turn the buffer on, you just it does something to the fuzz. You're getting all Eric Johnson on us but now. It, I don't even know what this, what it is. So I don't even know what they do. That you don't even switch yes, on exactly. just to get the sound. Yeah. So the the uh, the Tumnus goes into the Rory Gallagher Hawk, which goes, I need to find out because other than his yeah. signature strap, yeah. which I think was a posthumous posthumous, is that how you say it? Yeah. But I think it was, that was yeah, a, yeah. A, a, you know that never existed while yeah, he was alive. That's true. Um, so as far as I'm aware, this is like the only bit of Rory Gallagher signature kit that I've ever even heard of that he might have used really? while he was alive. That is it? very surprising to me because, uh, you know, you guys have all this stuff. Yeah, well, knowledge. I mean, I know all the gear he used, yeah. but I didn't realise that he had a signature, anything. Yeah. But yeah, it's cool. That's so a, a bit power. like a range master. Okay, so yeah. what, and that is on. That, that is on, all, that is yeah. constantly on, yeah. Regardless um, of whether it's regardless, acoustic or electric. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's always on. Yeah. Uh, that goes into this uh, amp splitter, which is made by Orange. And yeah. And so they go to the amps, and then the effects loop, we have the Supero Tremolo, which is, yeah, pretty good. Like it's pretty, it like gets pretty swampy or something, I guess. Got all that kind. It's really swampy thing, you know, but it's lovely. And then from the super, it goes into this marine layer reverb. Uh, the marine layer, layer reverb goes into the big sky and then into the effects. Well, it, there's a ditto there, but I, I haven't used it And your used big sky was where the shimmer was coming from, or That's, is that coming from yeah, the marine the, layer? Yeah, the big sky, I got this middle setting here, is where you're weird. You know? It's such a clean reverb. You know, it's lovely. I have but, got a question, though. Now, yeah. you... And I wonder if this is where the two amp rig really uh, becomes more critical, because you've o you've only got the reverbs going through one amp. Right? Yes. Yeah. So you got, and that's probably a really important part of not allowing if they get the sound too, to get too swampy yes, and yeah. too too. Um, yeah, you're right on yeah, the money. Too wet. So and that's it. So that's I mean that again is when if you're watching this and you hear about artists talking about a wet dry rig, you know that's kind of Pretty it. Much. So one, one amp with all the heavy wet effects on it, and yep. one amp staying relatively dry, and that yeah. does make a massive difference. Um, it does with a hundred watt amp and a sixty watt amp. I don't yeah. know what it's like for anything else because I haven't really tried no, no, it's, it. No, it's cool. But the, this rig is so universal that I can instead of these being in the effects loop, I can put them all through the same line, yeah. through the same chain and put it into a 57 champ and it yeah. sounds fantastic. Yeah. It is just so beautiful, man. If I could get away with playing that little tiny eight inch speaker yeah. on a big stage, I'd be flying, yeah. you know, but it just- You'd see a lot of blues players just mic that, they, don't you? They just gun it and mic yeah. it and it does sound- it, They must be freaks of nature, these guys, because there's no way I could- Really? I, could I bet you could. Off. I mean, I think, cause I, I remember seeing Clapton at the Albert Hall and he literally had a, a champ uh, gaffer taped to a chair and mic'd up. And that was, and it just The guy's gunned. a psychopath, like he's a complete nutter psychopath. You it, know what it I mean? It does sound, I think it sounds good. It does know, sound good. It does, it, sound, it does good. sound good. It sounds great yeah. in a band mix as well, oh, where you don't, definitely. you don't really miss the, the bass end not yeah. being there so much. Yeah. Um, tell us about, again, your, your Fender uh, yes. Blues. This, no, oh, no, no, just the one, amp. one more yeah, thing on the yeah. amp, and then we'll talk about the guitar. Okay. So you, you said that was a DeVille or a Deluxe? It De is a, a Deluxe. It's right? a Fender Blues Deluxe chassis. No, box. Yeah. Amp. Whatever, yeah. Um, with a Blues Deville chassis in. Oh, I into. see. So you got the sixty watts. Because I was going to say you don't, yeah. they don't do a one twelve Deville, don't. do they? they don't. So but it's they a Deville. Should. Yeah, it really should. And then, the, but you, the biggest mod you've yeah. done to that, because I think you said you changed the reverb tray, right? I changed the reverb but, to a three spring uh, long tail from a Vox AC thirty. Great, which is lovely. Yeah. It sounded horrible in the Vox, but it sounds great in this. It's Isn't a bit. Uh, it, it it introduces a little bit of noise. But yeah. I kind of like it. You know? But the, the, you've changed the speaker. I'm, an, and yeah. I'm a massive advocate of 
people doing that sort yeah. of deep dive. People, I find people change their pickups more than they change their speaker. Yeah, yeah. And yet, whenever I've done any testing, you know, pickups change the sound 5%. So relatively the same, you know. Yeah. Speakers change the sound like 50%. It's, it's like changing um, the engine in your car. Yeah. It just gives it more, you know. And what, what have you put in there? There's a Al Nickel Cream, 90 watt. Oh, so yeah. good. I think the El Nickels work really great with mm. the uh, with the fenders, you know. Yeah. Even the new ones that are all PCB and they're, yeah. they're they're fine for what they are. I've never had a massive amounts of problems with them. You know, we've I've used, you know, the only downside with El Nico um, stuff from from Sestin is they're two or three times the price. Yeah, of they're the massively non expensive. El Nico stuff. Again, I got that from but, the same grant I got yeah. the big sky, so but I was blessed with, yeah. with that. That grant, you know. But that, um, so the, the, the El Nico Blue would, would be what you'd traditionally find in an old AC30, yeah. but that is only a 25, 30 watt speaker. Not, so, not even, yeah. Uh, so or is it, is it 15, 15 watts? Watt. 15 watts, that's the, right. The yeah, newer right. Celestians, I think you could, you could push Probably it into a 20 or 25 watt, it should be okay. But, yeah. but a gold El Nico, I think, will do 50 watts, yeah. and the cream is 90. So, yeah, yeah it's a pretty versatile speaker. If you're going to buy one, you might as well buy the El Nico 90 because you can use it then with pretty much everything yeah. that's under. 100 yeah. watt, you know. It's great sound. Yeah, but I'm, I'm impressed. But yeah, let's talk about your, um, yeah, your, this, your what, is it, what is it called, a golf caster? It's, it's a golf caster. It's made by Izzy over in Golf Caster Guitars. He owns the company and he's from Florida. I was on tour with Eric Gales and I got a, I got a text or a message on Messenger from, from this guy. Never heard of him, never met him or anything like that. He had heard my music and he said, you know, I Dom, I love your music. I'd love to help you. I build guitars, mostly custom tellies, which I'm, I'm, I'm a telly guy at heart. And I got back to him and I said, listen, I, I have no money. You know, I have, I have no money to, to spend on custom made guitars and things like that. That's, that's just way out of my, uh, my, my budget. So he, he came back and he said, Dom, you don't understand. I, I build guitars and I, I, I love your stuff. I want to help you. I want to build you a guitar. What do you want? It's all in the house, you know? So I said to him, imagine if Rory Gallagher's Strat was always a tally from the very beginning. That's, that's what I want. Took him a while to get back to that request, you know what I mean? But he, he did it. He sent it. And the funny thing is that it got held up in customs. It ended up turning up on my doorstep on Rory's birthday while I was in Holland playing a gig for Rory's birthday. It was insane. Like the, it was like, I mean, I'm not a very massively spiritual guy, but the coincidences in that were like Rory saying, there you go, son. You know what I mean? It was weird, man. But uh, yeah, I changed the pickups. It had a little 59 and a cold sweat, I think. In the, in oh, so the, it had the single coils in it originally? Yeah, no, no, there were still humbuckers. The little 59 is like a single coil yeah, sized like a, humbucker. Yeah. And, and it, so you changed the bridge then, did you? I changed the both of them out for these, uh, these House of Tone pickups, which um, are more 57, like that mm -hmm. mid, that middle, you know, that middle tone that they had. Um, so this is the third set of the House of Tones that I have, which I'm, I'm extremely grateful for them working with me. You know, I'm really, really grateful to them. It's absolutely lovely. How do you find that? Um, do you find the Rory Gallagher uh, comparisons that people will inevitably draw? Do oh, you find I hear it. A hindrance? I hear or it. That's a, definitely or a hindrance. Yeah, or, or is, it, uh, is it flattering or a um, bit of both? Well, listen, the way I've, I've always said about it is there's a lot of people that I don't want to be compared to. <laughs> so if being compared to Rory's, a, a, you know, that's a, a, what more could you ask for, really? But I never went out of my way to try and sound like Rory or mm. to be Rory. I mean, at some of my gigs, I'm like, listen, I know that I'm not Rory Gallagher and I'm not trying to be. I just, yeah. for a long time, I felt like everybody had forgot his music and that I just wanted, because I, I loved playing his music so much, I felt like I owed him because he had taught me a lot without, yeah. I, unknowingly. He, yeah. he taught me so much about the instrument and, and not even just like being a musician. He taught me how to, how to be a certain way off stage as well, you know, just to be yourself and be true to your own beliefs and things like that. Because if you hear his interviews, he's just a guy. Mm. He's, there's no bravado there. He's just trying to, he's just a musician. He's the musician's musician, you know, and that kind of, that kind of taught me a few things about life, you know, in general. I owe I him a lot for that. He's He's better known, sadly, now oh, than yeah. he ever was yeah. while he was alive. Sure, and he's sure Van Gogh never, never sold a painting, you know what I mean, while he was alive. <laughs> this this, this, this the, it's, it's a horrible, harsh reality of life yeah. is that you're underappreciated in your time. But he's immortalized, you know, and he did that himself, yeah. you know, with his music. And you gotta, you got to be proud of him for that. So let, let's talk about what the future holds then for you, because I, I know, you, you know, like I say, you, you, you've kind of, 
you're on that blues scene now. You've you know been recognised by a, a few of your um, peers. You know, some big name players, Joe Bonamassa stuff, has asked you to come perform on some of his stuff. Um, what 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 is you know what do you hope the future holds and what is it what is it gonna I just want to keep playing music you know and and hoping that people still enjoy it and just continue to grow as an artist and, and just keep being true to myself and and don't want, I want to help people as much as the next person as well you know I want to I want to be able to go back to Belfast and try and help people there because it's a very hard uh, business to get into but there's I mean it's always the way that there's musicians out there that are just unbelievably talented but they just like I was like that, I had no, I had no idea what to to do with it or how to go about getting gigs. I, mean, I remember going around Belfast, all the bars in Belfast with a guitar, trying to get a gig, and they would let me play a full set for all their punters, and then they would say, "Well, thanks, son, but you know we're not what we're looking for." And you're like, "I just killed myself for two hours for nothing." Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. That's the hardship of it. You know, every single gig that I tried to do and to get gigs in Belfast was for absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? It's heartbreaking. The, the, the main key for anybody watching this that feels like they're not getting anywhere, or they feel like they're frustrated with it, which is so easily done, don't give up. Mm. Do not give up. You gotta just keep on pushing through and you gotta find the strength to, to, and make sure that you're doing it the right way for yourself. You know, you're playing from the heart and you're playing for you. You're not yeah. playing for anybody else. Yeah. You don't need to impress anyone, you know? That's, that's yes, the, the main you're, thing. You're, you're an interesting fellow on that front because I think a lot of artists, maybe younger artists than you, maybe perhaps have had a different upbringing, um, you know, and perhaps yeah. a, 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 a less traumatic upbringing. They are realistic nowadays about how commercially savvy you've got to, you know, you've got to have your Instagram account, oh, yeah. you've got to have your yeah. things, and you've got to do your deals with your pedal companies. It's and overwhelming. To, it but is, you, you know. You seem a bit of a throwback to just going, just whatever. Will just be, make be, the man. songs, yeah. just, just sing, you know, just... Listen, play the guitar and sing the songs. If, if you don't have the music to back it up, mm. then, you know, you're just shoveling shit against the wind, aren't you, really? <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah, to, to, to a degree, I suppose, the, 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 the modern truth is somewhere in between, isn't it? You yeah. know, you can't, if it's all superficial and there's no music, then it's not going to go anywhere. But yeah. equally, I could, would say if it's all music and you don't embrace you know, selling yourself, yeah. then you just make it a harder mountain to climb. Definitely. You? I mean, you have to love it. Mm. It is a labour of love, you know, and you know this as well. I, I, millions of your viewers know this as well. It is a labour of love. If you come into this thinking that, you know, I, I mean, I've never had any visions of grandeur about this thing. You know, I've never wanted the, the, the mansion and mm. the swimming pool and all the women and the, the thousand million pound guitars and all the stuff and the things that you mm. want and, you know, the the admiration that you have for other people and stuff like that it was just never any of that for me i'm just so happy to be able to play guitar and i've always played really it had nothing's really changed in that regard you know there's just more people come to the gigs and and but that's because of audrey and fenton as well it's not just me it's, there's a team you know you mm. need you need a team behind you you need people that love mm. you you need to be able to love them you know you need to be open-minded and you have to trust people with it yeah. if you don't have that you're on your own you know you really are and me having that friendship is better than any money in the world. It's better than having sellout gigs. It's better yeah. than having all the stuff and the whatever. Without that friendship, that it really did save my life. It changed my life completely. I owe them so much for that. And I'd rather that than anything else. I really would. It's, it's hyper refreshing, I think, you know, to feel like, yeah, it, it's, 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 it feels very uh, genuine, you know, uh, and, and it's lovely as well to meet someone who I think relatively early in life has already established like what is enough yeah you know so you're not that great question that i think all yeah. human beings you know what enough is never enough is it and there, i think you, true happiness is when yeah. you do go actually enough is enough do you know there's a great piece in that you know like the acceptance of it i mean mm. i always tell people people come to me with their problems sometimes you know and i'm, I'm like listen it doesn't matter what it is. You need to make mm. friends with it and move on. Mm. That's all you need to do is just sit down with it, make it your friend. You can tell a friend the F off every once in a while. If it's a good friend, they'll listen to you and they'll do it and they'll come back later, you know. But, um, you know, just make friends with it, make peace with it and move on, man. You know, that's it. Well, you know, this, this look, I do... We, 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 we didn't really talk about 2024 and the future. I, yeah, I, well, I, but you, you, you know, so there's a tour coming up. Yeah, we got a tour. Where in you're April. just taking the acoustic, yeah, right? Yeah, we got a, we have a, a solo 
tour in April with a, a wonderful singer and guitar player called Demi Mariner. Mm -hmm. She's going to be supporting. Now I've heard her sing and she can blow anybody out of the water. It's unbelievable. So I think Amazing. she's she's going to go places, you know. And uh, I'm 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 so thrilled and that she across, accepted. That's uh, across UK. This, that's Ireland. across the UK. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any dates in Europe or anything like that? We'll be hitting Europe this year, definitely. Full band shows and we'll be Brilliant. taking on Europe and doing whatever we can over there. Um, it'll be later in the year, definitely. And we got a big audience in the States as well, so you like to do anything over there or is that oh, still yeah, a market? Oh yeah, we've, we've, we've done the USA a few times and we'll definitely, well, we'll with any luck, we'll, we'll be trying whatever we can to get there for 2025. I, I can hear Fenton whispering. <laughs> what do you want now? 2025. 2025. Yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll be in the States in 2025 for sure. Well, it, you've got a great website as well, so the links for that will, will be below and Thank we'll you. be able to you know, find out. But honestly, man, it's been an absolute pleasure can, meeting you. Can I just say on a personal note that yeah. you know, I watch the show and I know a lot of people that do watch the show and, and uh, just to, to, to be here and, and everything, it's been an, an absolute honour. So thank you very much for oh, having look, me. Link. No, Fair honestly, the pleasure is all ours. Thank and you. we're going to jam, which is like you know, perks of the job and all that kind of stuff. So look... <laughs> Dom, it's been brilliant meeting Thank you. you. I Thank hope you've you. enjoyed this interview. Uh, please go check out Dom's music, support one of his shows. That would be great. And yes, thank you for watching. Enjoy the jams. Mm -hmm.